Well, the Premier League doesn't want to end without more dramatics. A lot of action on Saturday. Luis Miguel Echegaray, Janusz Michalek, and we'll have Tom Hamilton later on as well, hopefully to discuss a lot of what happened on Saturday. We begin with Manchester United's very important victory against Bournemouth, meaning that they got that fourth spot pretty, pretty good so far, obviously, and they'd have to take both of the remaining matches to lose for them to not get Champions League. A tremendous uh, match, uh, well, a result, so to speak, and Casemiro, fantastic once again. Janusz Michalek, Manchester United, three points. It wasn't pretty for 90 minutes, but they got the job done. Yeah, they got the job done, and that's what it's all about right now. I mean, at the end of the season, with the with the sort of uh, injuries that they have, right? I mean, I don't want to even mention defensively, although some players coming back, but Marcus Rashford, although back in training after his injury, he was ill today, so he didn't play. Probably a smart move not to play him. Chelsea's coming up to uh, perhaps seal that, and FA Cup final against Manchester City as well. So, look, even if you have to grind it out, uh, same lineup as in the game against uh, Wolves, same result as well. Yes, they're not scoring. Only, uh, I believe, your Villa in the top seven uh, has less goals than them. But you know what? There's there's something beautiful about the fact that mighty Manchester United can't score goals. But you know what? If you can't score, at the very least, defend. And they do that very well uh, on the back of uh, David De Gea, who, by the way, you know, some criticize, some want him out of the club. We know he's going to stay. 17 clean sheets, so uh, Golden Glove is his, and he had to make a couple of very good saves. So wasn't pretty. There wasn't a Manchester uh, United uh, identity, but at this stage of the season, uh, one of the major goals, obviously, for them was to be in the top four. And as I said last week, I think they're going to get it. Uh, Liverpool, that late goal from Bobby Firmino, uh, means that mathematically it's not done. But of course, with a game in hand, Manchester United will be in the top four. Yeah, well said there, Janish. Most notably speaking, it was an important result. And David De Gea, as you said, winning the Golden Glove, most clean sheets. And yes, there's been criticism, but overall, when it counts, when it matters, he's definitely come up in big situations. And Janish, this was a win without Marcus Rashford. So obviously, that's obviously, you know, something notable for Eric Ten Hag and Co. Anybody spoke out to you from the Manchester United side today, aside from obviously Casemiro on his yeah. opening goal? Well, Casemiro, and a wonderful goal. I mean, uh, it, it just the focus, uh, everybody saw it. A great ball from Christian Eriksen. I think Senesi got a touch on it. And, you know, that's when you can lose concentration. But great players to readjust. Uh, he did that exactly. And and that's why he's such a good player, such a great uh, leader. Uh, that midfield was good. Christian Eriksen and, and Bruno Fernandes, again, all three of the midfielders, in terms of their creativity, have done well. And, and early in the game, I made one of the notes that physically – that midfield, it's not what needs to happen going forward, right? But throughout the game, even though it was a bit hectic, I think these three showed uh, how, you know, how technically astute they are, how intelligent they are uh, when they're, they're in the possession of, uh, of the ball. I suppose going forward, I think Ek Ten Hag knows that that midfield needs changing. Uh, you know, I'm not even going to Fred and McTominay because I don't think that they're in his plans, at least uh, to play uh, quite a bit. But if you're going to be uh, fighting for the top honors, uh, that midfield needs to change. But uh, the, in the end, I think those three players were very, very good. Yeah, just one quick note, Janusz. I'd love to hear you talk a little bit just about Casemiro's impact for Manchester United this season. Obviously, he was uh, is uh, you know approaching the final years of his career, but we know that for the Brazilian national team, he's been amazing. His accolades were Real Madrid and beyond, of course. But he's been a very, very important player for United. Game changer, really, for United. When you think about it, when he came in and how the, the season has gone from zero expectations whatsoever, from the fact that nobody knew what Eric Ten Hag can or cannot do. In fact, in the beginning of the season, there were doubts already, maybe, right? Because uh, uh, these these managers don't get a lot of time, but obviously able to make a lot of decisions. But Casemiro, of course, I think his presence, his persona sometimes do. I mean, there's been games where he wasn't excellent, but I think if you're an opposing player sometimes and you know who you come against, uh, you know, it, it makes you think twice sometimes. Do I go through him or do I go around him? And, you know, the funny thing is that he's still in such form that you can do neither. You can't go through him or around him at times. And of, of course, it gives you that experience. I think, uh, I think maybe 
his protections of the back four and the fact that they've had 17 clean sheets, uh, that has to do a lot with him because uh, the opposing teams know know that he's a presence on both sides of the ball. So absolutely uh, excellent, of course. I mean, look, we don't have to look far. Manchester City against uh, against Real Madrid. Do you think that midfield, of, the famous midfield of Real Madrid, could have used him? Because I think they could. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you said something very important there, which is sometimes you just need this continental experience in a team, especially when you are under a new project with Eric Ten Hag. But there you have it, Manchester United, 3 points, 69 points, even with Newcastle. They have Chelsea next, Fulham next, and they have to lose both matches, Janes, for them not to get Champions League. And as you said even earlier before this, all over again, Manchester United should get this Champions League spot, right? Uh, yeah, they should. And as I said, they're going to get uh, Marcus Rashford, uh, uh, um, I'm assuming, because as I said, it was more illness. I think he would have been in the squad if it wasn't for that. We all know that he was training with the team. So it just makes sense because you don't know what may or may not happen. You want to have a Marcus Rashford uh, uh, at 100%. So I, I think they were getting them uh, ready for that. Today was just a bonus because it is a win. Liverpool did lose points. So there's a little bit less pressure. If there are any doubts about any of the, pl any of the players coming back um uh i think they 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 have a little bit uh, of an extra cushion there thanks so much for watching espn on youtube and for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the espn app and for premium content and live streaming subscribe to espn plus